This definitely melts into Article 21, which is very clear that then thereafter, if the court has realized that these fundamental rights exist, then the court must then interpret those fundamental rights in a way that favors an accused person. In a way that favors an accused person. <coughs> but what have they done in all this? Mr. Murray, how did you even come find yourself in this side? I just walked. And, and, and then, <laughs> and having regards to the service, the evidence gathered by investigators, to see whether the same relocation, a review of the decision to charge, which has already been arrived at. Save that the court should take notice that the, the letter is drafted from none of the councils before you. And this is a, a continuous approach in this matter. Every time advocates are mutating. When that issue is the result, the same advocate who was fired is in court. The DPP will also respond to that letter on behalf of our client. So that the DPP warrants were issued He has been brought to court. <coughs> Must provide reasons as to why the warrant should be lifted and he be entered to Kashmir. It will be the norm this country for people to defy police when they summon them. The public will lose confidence in courts that issue warrants of arrest. Taxpayers' money that has been used to trace him, arrest him, and arraign him here. Who meets that cost? <coughs> With the burden of heavy taxation on Kenyans, their tax should be used prudently. Not somebody who does not respect the court, doesn't respect the police. So I have very firm instructions from my client to oppose the lifting of the warrants, to oppose him being entered into Kashmir. The investigating officer needs to take the dock on oath to explain 
to this court how risky and dangerous it was to, to trace the, the suspect, where they arrested him from, those facts need to be brought to your attention, Your Honor. <coughs> Kindly, Your Honor, protect the integrity of these proceedings. As the DPP takes time to make a decision over the complaint, the judicial process under your guard We urge you to invoke the independence of the judiciary. Deal with the suspect within the confines of a warrant of arrest. You had an attempt was done by the advocates to lift the warrant. And the instructions from my client were very clear. The warrants were not against an advocate. <clears throat> and we have still firm instructions. One, did he disobey lawful orders by the police? To bring that out. Does he have a fixed abode so that he's being released to where? The prevailing report needs to tell us whether he's fit to be released on cash bail. You know, the fact that the DPP has deferred plea taking. A charge sheet has been registered. He is no longer under the control of the DPP or the police. He's this is a serious public interest matter. This is not money for laundry or money laundering or illicit money. It is money for international merchants. MasterCard, Visa card, UBA Bank. All these as Kenya is trying, the president is trying to bring this country into an international hub for business. What message are we sending to the whole region in Africa? That investors, their money can be taken and somebody walks to court. Seen from the notes here that they will not raise any issue. May you get favor in my submissions. <laughs> to be at Parliament for Pastor Ezekiel's matter. And so, time is running. Time is running. Ezekiel, will, Ezekiel is waiting for us. Just throw in the towel. The other president's position to try and blackmail you. <laughs> so he's telling you the president is trying to improve the economy. Please deny this man bond. Because the president wants to improve the economy. That president is not here today. That president does not know Kome Kirimi. They will never meet, perhaps in future. But right now, an application has been made to deny the accused person bond without any affidavit, without any documentation without any formal application being made by either the prosecution or by the advocate watching brief. And if we are going to talk about law, let us start with that one. What do they have here?
they have nothing. The prosecutor clearly, very clearly, has indicated to this court at this stage they have no objection to bail. That by itself means what exactly then? Means that he has spoken to that investigating officer that is being invited to the talk, means that he has spoken to the investigating team. And that means then they have reason to believe that the accused person does not need to be denied bond. So then what happens? Some person from Rwanda, <coughs> we don't know who the busybody would be. Based on what? It all simply then comes down to the law. And what does the law say? When an accused person or a suspect has been brought to court, he is entitled to bond unless the prosecution, I will repeat, unless the prosecution wants to object and they shall give reasons. Mr. Omari, is he a prosecutor? Your Honor, I, I almost became the DP. He almost became and they threw him out. But Your Honor, he is not. Maybe they fear him. <laughs> it is the prosecution that is in the try to circumvent it and that one comes in under article 49 H or G those two so then you must then bring what you call compelling reasons I will start with what my colleague has said Mr. Omari that probably my client is a flight risk Your Honor, if you are to believe such a statement, just a statement like that, then you have what you call the sky as the limit. Because any imagination, any saying, any creation like this one shall come about. This person who this law protects. And this one comes under fundamental rights. These fundamental rights are not there for the sake of. They were not made just to be looked at and read and left aside. They are made so that you can protect such persons from extremes of the state or extremes like my friend from Shakahola, Mr. Omar. For them to say that he is a flight risk, material must be placed before you. Must. Not may. Must. So as to safeguard that wild allegation. And I am saying it is wild because it's not based on anything. In the case of Dwight Sagarai versus State. Dwight Sagarai versus State. Justice Correa. And Justice Kimondo in the other matter. That is uh, the case of Peter Kamau Toku versus Republic. I have given the authorities both. What does, what is the main point there the judges say? You cannot come to court and say somebody is a flight risk. You must prove that. Either he has planned to travel, he has made an attempt to travel, or has bought maybe something like a ticket to show that he's going to travel. My friend walks in here. Give the state. <laughs> Yes, so when they were saying that he was absconding, they are not telling you the truth that they found him in his house. That is why there is no affidavit. That is why they cannot say deny him bail, because they found him in a place that he's supposed to be, his house. But you're being told he has no fixed abode. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? You find him in his house, you say, let us not oppose bail. But somebody else from Rwanda gives instructions that, no, please, deny him bail. Can they challenge that document? Again, no. <coughs> they are not telling you that he'll interfere with witnesses. They are not telling you that he has interfered. So it is the issue of flight risk and where he was. But then they marinate it and try to tell you there is a warrant in court 
a warrant of it cannot be so let us go back to article 19 and this is whereby again the state is brought in and dropped in these fundamental rights and I know that the prosecutor read and he understood and kept quiet. They refused to take his complaint. They do not even call him. They do not investigate the matter about him. Then they look for another warrant and come and say, arrest this man who the court has proved owns the accounts and owns the money. But you're being told very nicely and very tactfully by my learned colleague that this money belongs to merchants. They belong to MasterCard, Visa Card and... UBA Bank. This definitely melts into Article 21, which is very clear that then thereafter, if the court has realized that these fundamental rights exist, then the court must then interpret those fundamental rights in a way that favors an accused person. In a way that favors an accused person. <coughs> but what have they done in all this? Mr. Mari, how did you even find yourself? I just walked. And, and, and then, when this, these laws are so clear, Your Honor, if under Article 22 we find that the state and anybody else tries to interfere with the fundamental rights of an accused person, what do we do? We come to the court. So we come under Article 22, we come under Article 23, and we come under Article 165, whereby we activate you to then bring out those fundamental rights so that he can enjoy them. Not because somebody from Rwanda has said that he should stay in custody. On what basis? With his integrity protected, then what happens? We will come to court. We will come for trial. Grant him his bond, not because he is supposed to come and explain anything. No, the state should have placed material before you. But for the sake of it, because they are asking where does he stay, he stays in Karen, where they got him. I am so sure that had made my colleague, Mr. Dunstan, spoken to the investigating officer, they would have told him where they found him. They did not tell him. They hid it from him. I don't even know whether they trust each other. I'm going to respond. But then, he has been found there. He has a family. He has a wife. Two p.m. What?